Island Live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. <coughs> it, started. It, it started. started. it started. Yeah. It started. It started. <laughs> Hi there, Potter. Hi. I it's- feel like this is all I do is come on your show because I was on on Friday, too. This is like... Oh, I forget you were, but yeah. just for a bit. Yeah. Well, you're so valuable when it comes to parsing the greater events in our thank you, Lynn. I local like, environs. I like to give back. <laughs> I like to reach back and help the little people. Because they made it all possible. That's right. <laughs> well, if Potter's here, it means it's a Wednesday. And in fact, it is the 10th of April as time continues in, is in its inexorable. I'll get it out. Yeah. March. Yeah. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt today. It's just exciting for. Wow, yeah. For the is that thing. really? Is that the first? Yeah, yeah so it's, it's been for a while, yeah. Doing? All yeah. Right, right. It's balmy. I've got um, sandals on. <laughs> Don't you usually? Sort of post no. hippie chick kind of thing? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. No. Anyway. All right, enough. So. <clears throat> Get another one of our blistering opens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, just easing in here. Yeah. Okay. At 11 a.m., that'd be in an hour. Yeah. Uh, it will be announced in Washington, <gasps> D.C., the great fanfare <gasps> that a bipartisan group of senators has, in fact, reached a deal to expand gun background checks to all commercial sales, whether at gun shows, via the Internet, or in any circumstance involving paid advertising. Now... Don't ask me. That's what they, <laughs> that, that seems this, like a weird. <laughs> this is a deal that, that Manchin and and Manchin and um, and to me, yeah, to me. Uh, along with we should mention uh, Senator Kirk from Illinois and Schumer from New, New York. York. And at eleven, they're announcing this. I mean, now understand, this is just an agreement. It's not like this goes into law. This is an yeah, agreement to append this. Well, I guess somebody's going to say they want to make this an amendment to the current law, whatever. Anyway, it's amazing what's considered progress. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, what people forget, you know, is all the, I mean, like you say, we've dumbed it down so much. What people forget is back after Columbine, there was a whole big spate of gun legislation, too. And the way the Republicans torpedoed that, it wasn't by. Uh, you know, filibuster, and it was by attaching these kind Amendment. of poison pill amendments. So <laughs> it's it's quite mm-hmm. easy to imagine a Rand Paul or something like that mm-hmm. doing this here. Although, well, I mean, no, no, I, no, I don't no, want to. No. I don't want to. He dump will on not. This. No, no, no. He will not support this. In fact, oh, yeah, right. There's already two Democratic senators that have come out saying they could not support this. Mark Pryor, you got it. And I don't know who the Max other Max Baucus. Oh, Mont- sure, Montana. Yeah. So, <laughs> Mr. Um, Good Governance. Yeah, yeah but. So, um, anyway, it's considered a victory just that they're going to actually begin <laughs> to debate it. <laughs> tomorrow. Baby steps, Lynn. Baby steps. Unbelievable that that's considered a, you know, 20 children die and we manage to actually start a debate. Yeah, yeah. What I don't understand is everybody's freaking out so much about this Senate and will the Senate pass this. So what? Yeah, what will the, the house, house will never always, do it? Yeah, well, I don't that know. house will never 
go along with this. I don't know. Some, you know, back these background checks. I mean, you look at the polling; it's pretty consistent. It doesn't. Ninety percent of people. Ninety percent of people. Seem it seems. To it seems amazing to me. In fact, if I recall correctly, the NRA itself, and it's not too distant. Oh past, yeah, thought backed, it was. A, yeah, thought it was a fine thing. To, it was so, after Columbine. Yeah, said that was yeah, fine. Yeah. No, the uh, uh, well, whatever. So it, it is. It is remarkable, and of course, you know. I mean, part of this. Uh, let's. Yeah, at the risk of sounding cynical. Ah. I mean, Pat, to me, part of the calculation here is clearly that he's going to have to face re-election in a couple of years. He's up in 2016, so never hurts to be Mr. Conciliatory. Quote-unquote moderate on like two or three yeah. hot-button issues that aren't related to the stuff that you really care about, which is making sure the wall, that Wall Street... <laughs> Well, speaking, to earn fat you know, profits. speaking of a Republican who's going to have to be seeking re-election, let's go to our governor. Oh, nice uh, segue. Tom Corbett, yeah. who is taking it from both sides. It's really amazing. It's just, it is amazing. I mean, it's amazing what's not considered Republican enough yeah. these days. Yeah. Okay, so you did a piece in today's uh, city paper. Yeah, which kind of came about. I was talking to this guy um, who's the spokesperson for Bruce Castor, who's a name that probably most sane listeners here haven't heard of. He's a guy from out in Montgomery County, and he is contemplating a challenge, a primary challenge. He's a Republican, a primary challenge of, of, of Tom Corbett from the right, which... I, it just sort of mystifies me when you look at <laughs> when you look at and I, and I was talking to this guy and we were talking about Medicaid expansion, which which uh, the governor has been doing this sort of giant Hamlet act on. You know, I just I have these questions. I don't know to you know um, to expand or not to expand. I just can't decide. And and I was talking to this guy and I just started to feel actually sorry for Tom Corbett. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Because because you just kind of realize like as much as we bang our heads about the guy. <laughs> It, I mean, it's it could be so much worse. You know, you just you look at like some of the Republicans that he has to deal with or whatever, and where a lot of this is coming from. You know, we have, and and I, I have done this myself and reserve the right to continue to do so. We've pummeled this guy for stuff like where he is hemming and hawing on the Medicaid expansion. But the fact of the matter is, he's still got to get it through the legislature, and he's already got people in the House who are just like, you can't trust the federal government to keep funding this thing after two years because of their rampant spending and da 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 da. And it's just like, you know, this is coming from his own party. It's just like, realistically, how far is he going to hang himself out on this if he if he risks, A, alienating the crazy people, the, the rabid base, and B, doesn't doesn't get a bill passed anyway. Nobody gives him... Okay, so you're feeling it. sorry for him because it's like... A tiny, tiny little like bit. like, damned if he does, damned if he does. Yeah, although I still, th- I still think at some point, you just there are things that a politician should just stand up for and expand in coverage yeah. to hundreds of thousands of uninsured Pennsylvanians. Seems like a sort of good yeah. idea. Yeah, if you can't get it done, fine. You did one term. Thank you for your service. Here's a watch. Go retire to the country and become a philosopher or a poli-sci professor or something. Right, right, right. But yeah, I mean, it is. It is. You just you just talk to these guys, and this you know what this what this caster guy said to me is, is this would be if, if Governor Corbett does this, if he flip flops, which it looks like he's going to do. That will be like Arlen Specter in his vote oh, for the stimulus yeah. funding, which, by the by, helped forestall an even more disastrous recession and potentially a depression. And yet people still haven't forgiven the guy for voting in favor of something that, that Barack Obama proposed, which was a fairly modest and you know, fairly modest stimulus plan, most of which was tax cuts, which last I heard Republicans were in favor of anyway. It's just it's it's, as you say, remarkable how far off the rails we have seen it go just in the past 10 years really is but and i don't know i mean i i I, never mind i don't know i just get so sick of it that's right it looks like you got a big tax passel as it were passel i think stuff we can talk about no but but none of it is really particular it's just little stuff that little stuff okay caught my eye yes like did you see this in the local paper killer appeals death sentence did you see this i don't think so oh al let me just clue you in all right please do this sounds like a guy he's already um he's on death row yeah been there not a lot to do on death row so i assume he's been hitting the law books and right okay so 
Uh, he, this is uh, Kenneth Hairston, his name is, sentenced to death for the 2001 bludgeoning death of his wife and autistic son. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you okay. remember that? Vaguely, yeah. I don't. Uh, he wants to get off death row, and his reason is he says the prosecution made him look bad. <laughs> They made it look like I oh, killed my God, wife and autistic kid. They made it look what like co- I sledgehammered my kid. At the end of it, the jury was looking at me like I was some kind of monster. <laughs> well, so I, that made me laugh. There aren't a lot of laughs in the papers. Yeah, That's although laugh. in the fairness, in fairness, was it not just the other week when uh, locally Judge Cashman said to Henry or Harry Nicoletti, the uh, prison guard accused of abusing all those Prisoner. prisoners, you know, the prosecution made you look like somebody who abused a lot of prisoners. So, <laughs> well, that's and that fair. doesn't jibe with your reputation as a family man. So <laughs> I'm just going to give you some probation and then, uh, you know, maybe wear one of those anklets or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, hey, if it works for if, what's sauce for the goose, you know? Okay. Well. Oh, no, wait. He said his attorney made him look bad, not the prosecutors. No, no, no. Oh, this guy I, this says, said... says, says his attorney made him look oh. bad. That's what the... Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no, no. that's different. No. Okay. He says the prosecution <laughs> unfairly introduced evidence okay. about accusations that he had repeatedly raped his stepdaughter over oh. a seven-year period. Oh, dear. Okay. And in fact, he was due to go... Uh, on trial for the rape charges when he decided to sledgehammer his wife and kids because he assumed ah, he was going to get um, I see. he was going to get convicted and his reasoning was what will my poor wife and child do without me I guess I'll spare them okay. that and kill them so the argument was the prosecutors introduced this as motive evidence to his motive I guess and he thought that that was prejudicial that's yeah yeah well anyway Whatever. I mean... (laughs) Well... Okay, and here's another little little, uh, item that made me um, wonder. Okay. It says, Clarion County man indicted for taking uh, a 13-year-old girl to South Dakota with the intent of engaging in sex acts. Okay, here's what I want to know. (laughs) What? Why did you go to South Dakota? Right. What? What? I mean, why Ah, did you go to South Dakota? Ah, I mean, he had to drive all the way from Clarion County to South Dakota before he could have a sex act? Yeah. Will you explain that to me? What's the big city in South Dakota? Is it Bismarck? No, that's in North Dakota. There's a big city in Uh, South Dakota? uh, There must be a capital or something where people gather to... Is Fargo North, too? Fargo's North Dakota. Is, okay, Bismarck, Fargo. Name a city in one of the Dakotas. No, just South Dakota. I should know All this. Right. We should know. Come on, this is like this is like fourth oh, grade on. civics. What's this capital of South Dakota? I'm still shocked when I hear what capital Pierre. is. Some sta- Pierre. Pierre, I think it's oh. pronounced. Oh, well, maybe that's like that's the, right. Pierre. Yeah, maybe that's like the Paris of the Plains or something. It's the okay. city of romance, the city of light. You get out there, big sky country. Well, I still don't get it. I don't either. I, the right, other thing too right. is like like an idiot. I mean. You, you, this is like one of those things you cross, crime. exactly, yeah, you make no, it a federal right. offense. So they made it, it's now, he, he, he faces charges of transporting a minor across state lines for sex. Um, if he stayed in Clarion County, he'd just be charged with what? He'd still have a felony, but not, he wouldn't have the feds after him. Yeah, that's, that's... <laughs> I just don't understand yeah. what was he, why yeah. do he have to go to that? Yeah. You know, I hate it when the news gives you these little things yeah. and doesn't doesn't tell you what you're. Did you hear about the drive-by shooting in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi? No. Drive-by shooting in Tupelo of an elephant. Oh. Now aren't you going to ask what an elephant's doing in Tupelo, Mississippi? <laughs> The backstroke. No, wait, that's a different joke. <laughs> As a circus thing? Yeah. yeah. Was, so was it like PETA gone mad yeah, or something? Yeah, the circus was in town. Yeah. No, and the elephant was minding her own business, standing yeah. around uh, grazing. And some jerks in a car came by and shot the elephant. Intentionally. They weren't like aiming no, for somebody standing in front of the intentional. And here's what the, um, one of the, one of the, Law enforcement people in Tupelo wanted to make clear that we all knew 
This is not who Tupelo is. <laughs> it's funny because I've actually been to Tupelo, and there is a, there is a big sign when you go into the town. We don't shoot elephants, elephants. here. <laughs> That's what makes it such a horrific crime. It really just goes right to the heart of their identity. This as, doesn't as people who do not Tupelo. <laughs> um, and this, oh, here's another great quote from the absolutely. What's the wait? We don't. Here's, let's back up. What's the implication of that? That everywhere else there's an elephant killing. <laughs> people in Tupelo are like, well, we don't. Kill what do you expect when you go to Des Moines? <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of elephant killing liberals is so, what they got yeah, out right. there. Yeah. So. Um, uh, here's another great quote from this story. <laughs> Jeez, we've had the circus once a year since 1995. <laughs> 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 we've gotten to the good part. Oh, okay. Absolute, We're big time, baby. Absolutely. This is the first elephant shooting we had. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you hear about elephant shooting, yeah, so you yeah, always yeah. think it's going to happen in some other yeah. town. <laughs> Oh, the big, the big city perversity. It's just, ugh. Well, not here again. Just like transporting uh, that uh, minor all the way from Clarion County to South Dakota to have sex with uh, her yeah. becomes a federal crime. Yeah. This is an Asian elephant on the endangered species Oh, dear. List. That's oh, a dear. federal crime. Did, now, did they have a suspect? Is there a... They have a vague description of the car that got away. Um, how was it a Jaguar? Get it? Because it's a thing. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome if it was hyenas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. So here's what it says. So after the, the elephant took the shot and um, it said 20 minutes later, the elephant was chowing down, eating happy as can be. The elephant is not dead. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think I. Can you imagine uh, just one little? I mean, a, a bullet in a the high. A, is this a like a wait? This is you know what this is like. What? This is like years and years ago. There was a Far Side comic, where where there's like an elephant in a in a trench coat holding a gun on somebody. And he says, "Do you remember me, Kenya, 1964? <laughs> if you're going to try to kill an elephant, you better be prepared to finish the job." <laughs> Well, uh, and you know, if I'm these guys, look, if I'm these guys who did this, yeah, I'm worried now because yeah. you know what they say about elephants? They never they forget. They never forget, right? <laughs> this, uh, no. These perps, yeah, they, they, they bit off a little more. They're going to have very do. reliable eyewitness testimony in this case. Yeah, yeah. Very accurate yeah. You know, sketch or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, within 20 minutes, the animal was walking around its pen and eating carrots. <laughs> <laughs> and was heard to trumpet, that all you got? <laughs> I'm an elephant. <laughs> you can take me down with one of your <laughs> and You need an elephant gun. gun. And that's why there's a lot of, I believe the senator from uh, Mississippi uh, will not vote to uh, ban assault weapons because that's a, if it had been an assault an elephant, weapon. Uh, well, are we sure it wasn't? It oh, were they, 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 no, did they, were they able to indicate the well, not, no. caliber of the weapon? No, I don't know. It was an automatic? I don't know. So you can see, as far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty sparse news day. Well, I mean, the other thing about that, too, is is the problem with gun control is, I mean, the only thing that stops a bad man with a gun is, a, is an elephant. With the gun <laughs> is, that elephant absolutely has a right to self-defense. In fact, somebody, you know, Colt or, or Winchester ought to be making firearms that a gun, that an elephant can wield with its trunk or whatever. I don't know. The New York Times had this story. Nice. The PG did not. So. Oh, wow. Well. Um, that just, that just shows you the sad state of. It's a 39 year old Asian yeah. elephant named Carol. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. on her way to play Mahjong with some friends. And <laughs> <laughs> I think we've done enough. Yeah, probably. <laughs> enough. 
Okay, I think it's actually close to our 20s. It is to our 20s. It's so, on the 19s now, so maybe we can... I think it'd be a really nice time to just take a little break so we could sober up a little yeah, bit. Right. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412-316-3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. Go to BarkBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, and shows. This week only, get discounts up to 20% for Nordstrom gift cards. Supplies limited. BarkBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BarkBargains.com. It's warming up outside, so get to Littles for all your spring needs. Littles has everything for men, women, and children to stay in style for this upcoming hot summer. Lots of great colors from Dansko, New Balance, Steve Madden, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. Oh, this looks like a rant I received. Yes, it looks interesting. Though, okay, perhaps. let's do it. A few thoughts this from John. In from John, and this is in regard to yesterday when we I was talking about the um, well, some of our conversations. Universal background today. checks. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but he wrote this yesterday. Okay. Oh, because it says it's about Tuesday's show. Got it. Even though, yes. In regard to a reported ninety percent of people in favor of universal background checks to own firearms, I believe that survey, and I agree with the result but only as far as it goes in an overall generic sense. Question that should be asked as well is what might happen as a result of all this information collected. Will it? No, they're going to. Yeah, they're. That's... Listen. Oh, no. They do a background check. And within, I think they've got 26 seconds or something to destroy it. And you cannot, the federal government will not get the information. Right. Is that correct? Is that right. how you understand it? Right. That's an existing law. And, and no, and that is, will not it, be yeah. tampered yeah. with. That will not be tampered with. There will be no registration. There will be none of this information will ever get to law enforcement. It's beyond belief. It is amazing. For example, <clears throat> we got rid of a car. A while oh, ago, okay. and 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 we canceled the insurance, and the and the state hadn't gotten word that we got rid of the car, and we got this very sort of very tart letter about yeah. we understand you have canceled the policy, you must furnish us with a, you know they wanted Title. they wanted the they wanted the, I think they actually wanted the physical license plate, if I recall. This oh, was really? a while ago. They just yeah, they wanted me to like mail that in so they could, I don't know, bury it in some field or something. I don't know what they do with, with no. It, you know, if you look at what government is allowed to sort of regulate and take interest in is, you know, whatever. You can think whatever you want about it. We're used to it. You don't see people marching on the DMV because they got a letter like that. Um, But guns. Guns. Okay, so John says, uh, the question is, what will happen as a result of this information? I want to tell you absolutely nothing. Will it be used for other purposes than to just keep track of? No. Again, such a federal law would only be allowed would only be well, followed. followed by law-abiding people. Gangbangers and crazed people need not apply. Listen, I just want to say that to that. If that's an argument, that there's no point in, in passing a law because only law-abiding people will follow it, then why have any laws? Right. What? Right. I mean, that is such why a specious... Why outlaw homicide? Yeah, because, hey. right. That is such a specious <laughs> argument. Why do yeah? Why do we have a charge of of, of of why is murder a crime when only murderers will not you know the very people you don't want to commit engage homicide. in the in the act right. will not pay any yeah. attention to yeah. it. Well, the the problem so, is the murderers don't have a successful lobby. I mean, that's, that's what you need. You know, instead of filing spurious legal claims, maybe they should be, um, you know, putting together a super PAC. Maybe we should tell the bludgeoner uh, yeah. that you should yeah. think about. Prov- Hire yourself a lobbyist. <clears throat> Unbelievable. And that is, as arguments go, <clears throat> that is as specious as they come. I would say his, his, the second point he makes. Okay, is, second yeah. point is you mentioned that uh, that the 
that this, the fact that 90% of Americans want this should force Congress to take immediate action. The people have spoken, more or less. It is an outrage our federal government isn't moving to do the will of the people. We took a vote. Damn those lunatic right-wingers and any on the left afraid of losing their next election bid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the argument is the ar- the argument is as he's, uh, as he's going to say is that we elect people to represent us. This is this is yeah. a republic, not a democracy, as they like to say at Tea Party gatherings. For some reason, I've never understood why. Um, uh, and so we don't necessarily elect officials to instantaneously do our bidding. Right. Um, I know this is true. Yeah, and that's to that's exercise true. their own judgment. So, yes, exactly. That's right. So, yeah. And we can vote them out of office if we don't like their judgment. Right. Uh, and then he does. We are a representative republic, after all, and right. not a true democracy. Right. Um, we don't put through legislation simply because the vast majority of folks vote on it through a survey. Yeah. You know the Which, old saying, a pure democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. <laughs> I never heard that one That's before. a good, yeah, that's right. We don't do that here. Why, if, if we govern based on surveys, something like 11 million, put me down 20 Plus, I don't understand. Illegal. Oh, what he's saying is if we if we if we put immigration up to a vote, for example, we could probably count on a, a large majority of Americans um, voting against the interests of all of these immigrants, and presumably against. I mean that that is that that is that is that is true. That is always the tension in a democracy like this. Is that <clears throat> very often there are some things when it comes, especially to human rights or whatever, you would not. That's right. You don't want to, to listen submit to the people. To, to no, the no. The people. And, and I, you, I assume and the Second Amendment. People would say the Second Amendment is a civil liberty afforded to us in the Bill of Rights. It too should not necessarily that's true. be subjected. And if you ever, uh, if you think that simply the will of the people should prevail, then we there's no reason to have a Congress. We can just uh, yeah. have constant, uh, you know, yeah. especially in this day and age, computerized referenda. Sure, constantly. all the time. Yeah, We can all vote all the time. So, I mean, that point we take. Yeah. But um, this specious argument about you can't, that it's stupid to pass any law because they won't be followed is, right. it's just ludicrous. Stop. It doesn't <laughs> hold any water at all. And he points out, and this is good, something like 70% of the American people didn't want the Affordable Care Act, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But they got it, sort of. <laughs> Remains to be seen, actually, whether we'll ever get it or not. Uh, okay, so there, uh, and he says, thanks for the indulgence. No, thank you. I appreciate yeah. I appreciate a, you know another point of view being um, proffered. There is nothing more dull than listening to one's own thoughts bouncing back and forth. It really is. And that's what we all seem to like these days, an echo chamber. I agree, agree, agree. (laughs) So true. Well said, Lynn, well said. All right, God almighty. You put your finger right on it. (laughs) Fine minds think alike. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, I'm going to give you an obit. Oh, dear. McCandlish, what a name. McCandlish Phillips. Hmm. What do you think they called him? Mac. Yeah. Probably. Candy. (laughs) Phil. (laughs) McCandlish Phillips. He was uh, apparently a very, very respected reporter for the New York Times. Okay. Way back when. All righty. Because I don't remember that. Yes, with a name like that, he would have to be. You think so? They say that he would take even the most mundane story and somehow make it, for instance, let's say you're a reporter at the New York Times and you're told you have to cover, uh, you have to cover the St. Patrick's Day parade. Yeah. That would not be, you would think to yourself, I'm a reporter for the New York Times and you want me to cover a stupid parade? Okay. But he would seize that story. And here's his, here's his lead. I think it's just the first sentence. <coughs> the sun was high to their backs, backs. What is it with me today? The sun was high to their backs, and the wind was fast in their faces. And 100,000 sons and daughters of Ireland, and those who would hold with them, 
Match strides with their shadows for 52 blocks. It seemed they marched from midtown to exhaustion. I could have done without that last sentence, but that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Match strides with their shadows. The first part's from that Irish blessing, right? May the wind May always be at your back, back and the sun something or other. So you kind Sunrise of like flip, up to greet you. Yeah, so he kind of flipped it around so that it was actually. Oh, so that was pretty subtle, too. That, uh, thank you for uh, getting that. because uh, Oh, it really works on so many levels. Huh? That's, that's what made McCandlish Phillips a household name. McCandlish. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, what made Oop-a-doop. his name yes. ah. was um, he had a front page story, October 31st, 1965, where he unveiled the fact that the Grand Dragon of the New York State Ku Klux Klan and a chief organizer for the national clan this is all the first same person and a former national secretary of the american nazi party won what's this jerk's name philip weinstein <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise Will you <laughs> oh didn't see that coming <laughs> why did you say that oh, yeah. I don't, is it because i'm right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's not his name okay but, but, but he was jewish, jewish. yeah <laughs> That was just a guess. That's great. <laughs> His name was Daniel Burroughs, and he was raised an Orthodox Jew. Huh. Obviously, it didn't the, take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I mean, he, he, he had real trouble finding this guy, but he went and did all the due diligence. And in fact, yeah, went over to the Bronx, found all these people who knew the guy as a kid been to his bar mitzvah, said he was brilliant, had an IQ well over 150, but that he always seemed a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> and so he finally tracks Burroughs down and spoke to him in some uh, little diner uh, about things. And then he got to, 20 minutes in, he said, um, so I understand that you're, you're Jewish. And the guy went nuts, and he said, if you print that, I will kill you. Wow. And he apparently made that threat a number of times. Well, did McCandlish Phillips... Back down? No! Did not. He printed it. And on the day the article was published, Mr. Burroughs killed himself oh dear okay now you say oh dear what would you feel as a journalist if the subject of your reportage which unveiled something about them that they were desirous of keeping secret what would you do if they killed themselves this would be a better question for Marty Griffin, I think. Um, yeah, indeed. And I've often said that. I don't know that he ever has addressed that very well, because that did happen to Marty Griffin. I think, you know, I mean, I think those would be two very different cases, obviously, you know, which is um, <laughs> you've got a guy who's essentially purveying hate and stirring up animosity. No, Marty's for, thing no, no, is even harder no, because. No, I'm he, saying, I'm saying yeah. with, Mar- with Marty's story, I think if. if with, with a piece like had, that, that was a guy who did nobody any harm, as far was, as as far as any of us. He unveiled that he was uh, that he was gay. Yeah. yeah. So and he um, was a minister, and he was gay, and so, he killed himself. So I think that's I think that would be much that's harder. Much harder to deal. This with. This is just like I mean, I don't know what you can do. You know, I mean, you've got a story. If the guy had said, I'll, "If you print that, I'll kill myself," on the front end. That I wouldn't keep you from doing. I don't. That I don't know. I, I, I. It would be a different calculation. I mean, I'm sure you say I'm going to kill you. I'm sure that that just spurs a reporter. You know, I have never been in that situation happily, but um, you know, I would. I would suspect so, it would just spur a reporter to even be more willing to to publish it. Well, so I think it would devastate me. So how did how did uh, Mr. Well, Phillips take over it? the years, it says here he was asked whether he felt any responsibility for this man's death. And he said, no guilt, Yeah. a vague sense of sadness, yes. a vague sense yeah. of sadness. 
Uh, however, um, let me tell you this about McCandlish. About five years later, he leaves the New York Times and founds a very sort of right-wing Pentecostal missionary fellowship in Manhattan. Well, at least he wasn't preaching to the converted. And <laughs> it, it, it included the, uh, its tenets included the belief that pornography, drugs, abortion, and any form of fornication, including premarital sex and homosexuality, are sins. McCandlish never married, by the way. Mm, uh -huh. What are you trying to say? I don't know. <laughs> sort of like a tortured soul, yeah. I think, in a lot of ways. And I give you that to let you know what that he was a real, real religious yeah. person. Yeah. And so you said, what did he? What was his reaction when he was told that the guy had committed suicide? So uh, it was the day. The paper popped up on October 31st, a Sunday, page one, Sunday, New York Times. The guy was dead by that afternoon. Mm. Killed himself immediately. Uh, and, and there was no question about it's being a suicide? No. I'm just thinking about some of his no, associates. Okay. No, no. Okay. Probably wanted to do it before they got yeah, to him. Yeah, maybe so. Anyway, on the afternoon of October 31st, the uh, managing editor uh, phoned McCandlish to tell him very gently that the subject of his story had shot himself. And here's what he replied. What I think we've seen here, Arthur, is the God of Israel acting in judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that I, I am but a vessel oh, for the God. divine will. Isn't that weird? It's weird. I did creepy. I'm going to say that the next time <laughs> <laughs> some story of ours has some unintended consequence, you know? <laughs> the next time a zoning board meeting goes bad. <laughs> it's the gods of the Israelites. It's the god of the Israelites. All right, so anyway, they are McCandlish hmm. Phillips. He's dead himself at uh, the age of 85. Uh, by the way, it says that this ministry he founded... Uh, in the early 70s, it made headlines after the kidnapping of several of its congregants by their families. <laughs> <laughs> so, who thought he was running a yeah, cult or something. Yeah. Weird! Yeah. Isn't that a weird Some one? people lead extraordinary lives. Uh, yeah, I will say that. And McCandlish, who? Phillips. Phillips. Was uh, one such uh, fellow. Uh, getting enough calcium, it says here. Never mind. You're a guy. Guys, of course, don't have to worry about such things. Do you? Do men worry about I don't think their it's, bone it's more density? of an issue for women for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, for some reason. For some reason. Well, I just, go, I just go by the commercials I see on the yeah, evening news, and it's yeah. always Sally Field or somebody like I that. I know, saying, my bones. <laughs> my bones. Wow. They're porous. That's actually pretty good. You could get a gig. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be I great. Know. You could be like on the local TV. <laughs> just, just, my bones. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Collins. <laughs> I Remember know me? you know me for having a lot of backbone when I take on important oh, there issues. There you go. But yeah. in fact, my backbone <laughs> is shrinking and compressing. How the one a day people aren't giving you live reads on this show, I don't understand. I don't know either. Well, somebody, somebody tape, somebody put that on a tape and send it to so many missed Procter and Gamble or whoever the hell. Uh, probably Johnson so. and Johnson, Procter and Gamble. Take your. There's only a few. Yeah. Hey, I did a story the other day about how the capitalists on Wall Street are seeing, uh, you know, gazillions of dollars in their in their future uh, because of what they see as the inevitable inevitability of uh, legalized marijuana. Uh, mm -hmm. So speaking of these just in PG and, and PNG and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they're already, there's oh, bunches yeah. of them making plans to essentially scarf up, buy up all mm -hmm. the little mon pa operations that will exist. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So that we, the people, will not be able to, like, go to your corner little pot right. market, but instead we'll end up in some grand emporium owned yeah. by, like, one or two yeah. players. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Some, I, I remember once that. years ago somebody saying to me, well, you know, the thing about pot is unlike unlike tobacco, it doesn't cause cancer. And I was like, well, not yet. Wait until... Yeah. Wait until Philip Morris gets a hold of it, you know, yeah. and then they, because you know, a lot something. of, the, oh, yeah, I mean, a lot of, for example, in cigarettes, you know, one of the additives, one of the chemical additives there is is a chemical that allows the cigarette to keep burning even when you're not smoking it. People who smoke know if you smoke like a cigar or a pipe, it goes out if you don't smoke. Or it. if you Whereas smoke a cigarette, a joint, a joint goes. A cigarette out will burn all the way down. It's because they add a ah. chemical in there, and the reason they do that, of course, is <sighs> so you have to light up more cigarettes. In the that's same period right. of time. So there you go. So to me, that's it will be that's what'll happen. Well then we'll just have to grow our own. Do you think they'll make that criminal? Right, yeah, I mean I'm sure it is uh, Will yeah. it be criminal to grow your own is if it they not, legalize is it, marijuana? Is it not criminal to distill your own whiskey? Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, could be. Well, how they how the hell they're gonna police that? I mean they can't stop it now. I mean half the Half the pot farms in the world are, are in this country are probably on a state park or something like that somewhere, right? So, Well, one of the larger ones they found recently, and this blows my mind, is in the forests of northern Wisconsin. Now, fig, you would grow pot in northern Wisconsin where the growing season is? What else is, is there to do? Well, <laughs> what they've done. I mean, really, there's nothing there. Except Until hockey, know, like, I mean. Right, right, right. So... It's Mexican cartels uh -huh. that ship their people up. These poor guys don't know where the hell they are. Yeah. They take trees down, they make a bit, bit, bit and they grow their they grow the pot. It's then shipped back. Nobody I mean, notices. Well, obviously somebody did, or I if wouldn't they, have been if reading. They cut that. down the trees and they start growing. You have no pot? idea the vastness yeah, of don't. those forests yeah, I probably don't. and yeah. the lack of human. Yeah. Uh, humanity anywhere yeah. around it's just um very sparsely populated it must be because one would think well that is how they found one would it. think if you ran into a bunch of spanish-speaking well, so, well, no, guys no. in the woods of, of northern wisconsin oh no they live on their they never see anything else mm. they're brought supplies they're this that i mean and the only way they were caught is some little plane was flying over once and looked down and and noticed it so mm. now I guess the state police sort of regularly sort yeah. of like are patrolling. But, you know, I don't know. Where there's a will, there's a way. Where so there's a, where there's Where there's demand, there'll always be people willing to take the risk to uh, satisfy it. Mm. And on that capitalist note about the, again, inexorability of the marketplace, <laughs> we will take a break to sell you something. <laughs> Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for the latest on the upcoming mayoral election. Plus, Joshua Bell, Artie Lang, Joey Bata, and Southside Meat Pies. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout Western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone at citypapermobile.com. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we've got a pep talk that can motivate you. Sometimes things don't always turn out the way you want them to. You can improve your future. Now get your game face on and take the first step towards a better life. Hurry up. Don't make me repeat myself. Whatever level of motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Call 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or visit yourged.org for your pep talk and for free classes in your area. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education. Brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. All right. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Potter brought up uh, the toxicity of uh, cigarettes and how, in fact, some of that toxicity was added in to it by uh, capitalists wanting to... Swine! Yeah, yeah. Wanting to provide a product that, uh, well, would seemingly... I mean, that's seemingly a good thing for the consumer. You don't have to keep 
you don't have to keep mm. lighting oh, yeah. it, right? Yeah, Which guess. would be annoying. Mm. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So there is the American. Uh, <clears throat> hey, you know what? You know who wrote this story is my old boss, the former editor of Pittsburgh. Oh, look at that! Andy Newman wrote that. Yeah. He did. I know Andy. Aw, hometown boy makes good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and he often writes about advertising and marketing for the New York Times. Well, there you have it. So, here we go. Andrew Outside. Adam Newman. Because yeah. there's another Andy Newman. There is. Who just wrote a piece the other day about what? I can't remember. And I thought, I wonder, is this Andy Newman? Then yeah. I thought it didn't seem like yeah. him. It's our Andy Newman. Okay. Uh, we move from cigarettes to the residue of cigarettes, and I don't mean the ashes, but to the... Stuff that collects in the filter itself. But. Yeah. No, to the oh, cigarette okay. uh, but. Okay, uh, to the last little bit of... Yeah, yeah. that you can't smoke. And um, the amount of litter that mm. that is created by mm. cigarette mm-hmm. butts mm-hmm. is mind-blowing. Okay. I mean, it is mind-blowing. I'm ready to have my mind blown. Smokers litter cigarette butts 65% of the time. Yeah. Do you, I'm shocked That's, at no, that. No, seems about right. You, Number of times I've just seen people... To, you know, see it chuck it they fly out it. windows. Yep. Yep. I standing at the bus stop. It drives me crazy because there's the city has put these mm-hmm. cigarette these little stands stands yeah. all over the place at bus stops. The, someone will be standing one foot away from that, take, <coughs> and they won't use it. Yeah, <coughs> they just throw it down. Part of that is the mistake, well, part of it is just piggery. The other part is a lot of people think it's biodegradable. Yeah. So it's like throwing an apple out the window. Right. Something I have to admit I've done. <gasps> on a, If I'm in a rural area and it's I throw it into, like, you know, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, you're a latter-day Johnny Appleseed, really. I just think that's <laughs> actually a good thing to do. It's true. Um... <laughs> Cigarette buck, buck, butts, butts made up 38% of roadside litter. By volume? Wow. All roadside litter. That's according that's, to the uh, Keep America Beautiful people. Uh, one Over one million cigarette butts were removed from American beaches yeah. <laughs> in 2000. Nature's ashtrays. <laughs> that's that's right. I think of them, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. A cigarette butt has in it fibers mm-hmm. of a cellulose mm-hmm. acetate. Yep. What do you mean, yep, yes? Like you that's, know. That's... Well, guess what cellulose acetate is? It's plastic. Yeah. So. <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? So them. <laughs> <laughs> They're not biodegradable? No, is that your point? they that's... don't. Okay, now, <laughs> here we get to the toxicity part. Yeah, okay, this will be good. The butts leach all kinds of nasty stuff. Right. Measurable amounts of cadmium, mm. arsenic, lead, and nicotine. Yeah. You want to you wanna do a little experiment at home to see how toxic it is? Sure. You put <laughs> I've a, got a two-year-old. Why not? <laughs> you'll enjoy this. A, take a single cigarette butt, one little butt, and put it in a liter of water. And while you're there, throw in some minnows. <laughs> Here's a trick for your next party. <laughs> <laughs> one cigarette. And it makes a great aperitif. <laughs> <laughs> So they, so they them, die. They die. How fast? Does it say? 96 hours. Takes oh. a while, but it, it, it's a long party then. So, yeah, maybe yeah. you should really you should do it, this in no. advance. You want to time this what? just so the minutes start dying about an hour after your guests are invited to arrive. That's I think I saw I think I saw Martha Stewart give that advice. So, wait, there was there was cadmium, arsenic and lead and lead and something else. Maybe they could take all those cigarette butts and make batteries out of them or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Isn't that what's isn't that what's in batteries? Cadmium, lead, cadmium, nickel. Lead. Yeah, that is some of what it nickel. is. Nickel. So maybe they could be. Re- they probably have nickel in Virginia uh, Slims or something like that. You know, it's a higher toned product. <clears throat> anyway, so when you see all those, yeah, I just it drives me crazy. Yeah. You know, it also, and, and, the, we, and it explains why we see so few minnows on the city streets. Because <laughs> 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 no wonder they have such a hard time. <laughs> and it's rare to see, if you think about it, the effort to get people to stop littering has been somewhat successful in that mm. it is rare to see somebody throw like a can out the window. Yeah. Right? Yes. Although you still can. And and the effort to it, that's interesting because the effort also to, to 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 make smoking itself less popular. That's right. Is increasing. But yeah. there's obviously a hardcore set of people who resist both messages. And I'll tell you where they're standing right now on the corner of Smithfield and 6th. Yeah. Waiting for that Waiting for that East you End bus. You know what's interesting, though, about the smokers that you see at the bus stops? Please sit. Please. <laughs> Please no, continue. No, <laughs> oh. no. They often, it's amazing how many don't have light, a light. Uh. So it's not unusual to have someone approach, Pass, uh, yeah. approach and say, hey, you know, you got a light? You got a light. I'm thinking, if you have a cigarette, why wouldn't you have a book of matches or a light or whatever? Then, because cigarettes are so expensive, if you're smoking a cigarette at the bus stop and the damn bus comes, which you normally be happy about, but not if you just lit up a cigarette, they put them out and they stick them behind their ear or put them in their pocket. Or they hand it off to somebody in a gesture of real, uh, you know, hey, man, want, yeah. that's right. I was once on a bus where a guy got on the bus, and um, after a minute or two, there was all this smoke pouring out of his pocket. And you oh could God. smell something. Oh you could God. smell something burning. This is like this is like at ten or ten thirty at night. And what it was is he'd actually he was smoking a cigar and just shoved it in his pocket in an absent-minded moment. And there's just like these this voluminous like white smoke. And there was a it was like at ten thirty at night in Oakland. And there was a like, sitting across from him was a was a nurse who had just gotten off her shift at you know Presby or whatever. And it was just like she and I were kind of looking at each because this is like a really difficult social moment. How do you tell somebody that they're on fire? Yeah, well, I don't think there's that's just. Hard. Did There's you? just no. I don't know. We just kind of looked well, at each other. She was like, she's like, "Sir, I think your coat's on fire." <laughs> and he, kind of, he was kind of like, he was also kind of dozing off a little bit. And he kind of looked at me. He's like, "Oh!" And he's kind of, and he started, he started like slapping himself out. And the bus driver's like, "It's a good thing there weren't any college students because he would have run them all down." He was just like looking behind him, laughing hysterically. It was really funny. Oh God. So, just a little word to the wise out there, folks. If you're going to do it, make sure that cigarette is fully extinguished. So, have you heard the brouhaha about uh, the country singer Brad Paisley's last latest album? I, I, you know, I heard something about it. You did? There's something about him apologizing, but not really for something? No, something, one of or? the songs is called Accidental Racist. And in it, he oh, writes man. all the songs. He's trying to bring attention to... Uh, the racial issue. Oh, good. Because I certainly think what we need is more country western singers doing that. I can't imagine anybody better positioned. Now, see. Go ahead. Anyway, so, so guess it's a du- accidental it's racist. A duet, and you know who he does it with? It's not Stevie Wonder, is it? LL Cool J. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yep. All right. Sort of Ebony and Ivory for our, our age. Well, what they said is, I always hated that song, Ebony right. and Ivory. Side by side. On the piano keyboard. Oh, why can't we? Why? Because the piano is an inanimate object that doesn't have a history or ideas. That's why. It's, Next. It's so cheesy. It's so stupid. It's I, like that I song about uh, beans but, and cornbread having a fight. Anyway, go ahead. So. Well, I don't have the full the huh. lyrics here, but man, all hell's breaking loose. Okay, so what are they like? Just like. Okay. Here we go. All right, I'm looking forward so, to this. This will be good. No, so Paisley sings uh, from the perspective of a man who's wearing a um, T-shirt with a <laughs> Confederate flag on it. I see. Good son, boy. He's wearing his shirt. Okay. And here's part of this the... This is in the song. This is the character in the song. In is the song. Okay, got it. All right. And he sings this. 
to the man that waited on me at the Starbucks down on Main, I hope you understand. When I put on that t-shirt, the only thing I meant to say is, I'm a Skinnerd fan. Did any of that actually rhyme? Yeah. Okay. Stand and fan. <laughs> to the man that waited on me at Starbucks down on Main, I hope you understand. When I put on that t-shirt, the only thing I meant to say is, I'm a Skinnerd fan. Yeah, okay. Jeez. Then man, I'm 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 now offended just on the basis of really bad lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> then part of the lyrics that LL Cool J sings, and if you were offended at that, wait till you hear this. LL Cool J sings, "Stop it! If if you don't judge my gold chains, I'll forget the iron chains." Well, that seems like a bad deal. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you shut up about my fashion yes. choices, I won't mention the f- 300 year <laughs> history of slavery. <laughs> no. So huh. how, isn't that amazing? That's what it says. Then, uh, but then he goes on, or as the review in the New York Times says, then he continues stupefyingly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Times said that? Yeah. Okay, good for them. All right, Stupefyingly. Good. Oh, boy. Here we go. This, Our, wait, this is this is the Paisley, or is this LL Cool J still? LL Cool J. Okay, so, Okay. If you don't judge my gold change, I'll forget the iron chains. R.I.P. Robert E. Lee, but I've got to thank Abe Lincoln for freeing me. Know what I mean? <laughs> Man. Okay. Um... <laughs> Oh man! And the woman, and if you listen to Paisley, because he's been interviewed, he sounds so earnest and so wanting to get a dialogue going. So the uh, reviewer in the in the Times says, uh, "Good intentions alone do not a political transformation make, <laughs> nor do lyrics of gobsmacking simplicity." Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds more like it was a reviewer rather than an actual reporter, right? I mean, so that was a critic, I not think so. a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then he has another song on this album called Southern Comfort Zone, where he's trying to push Southerners to look beyond their own culture. You, you can see he's, again, he's earnest yeah. as hell. Yeah. So there's nothing, he says, um, is the lyrics to Southern Comfort Zone. Not everybody drives a truck. Not everybody drinks sweet tea. <laughs> Not everybody owns a gun. Wow. Okay. Later, he talks. Thanks, thanks for saying what none of the rest of us had the courage to say, Mr. Paisley. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for him. Oh, I guess I shouldn't be such a northern cynical person who's mean. Here's, okay, here's, the, here's another. Hello, Cool J. Paisley sings, I'm just a proud rebel son with an old can of worms, looking like I got a lot to learn. Cool J says, if you don't judge my do rag, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I, I won't judge your red flag. Man. And then he goes on to, if you don't judge my gold chains, yeah. I'll forgive, forget the f- iron chains. Oh my God. Again, so, again, it's just no well. Here's what Paisley says. Oh no, here's what, because, you know, Cool J's under attack. Yeah. Too. Rightfully so, I have to say. <laughs> Here's what he said. Music is about connecting different people, different people, and building bridges and breaking rules. If it's not compelling and it's not complex and it's not interesting, then what are we doing it for? So I think it's the right move. I needed to do something that was going to be interesting like that and shake things up, jump out of the box. I'm really proud of it. I hope the world hears it and enjoys it. And he says the direct slavery reference did not phase him. What other country artists or any artists right now talks about slavery, said L. Cool J. Well, not many of the countries have the kind of experience with it we did either. So, um, I don't know. I, mean, I think you'll be the, hearing more about that. I mean, I guess, I guess what I just say about his side of it is, that, I mean, uh, that's, that's not pushing things forward. That's really a reactionary message. The idea that, the, the whole idea that a, that, a, that a Confederate flag is simply just another kind of fashion choice, which both those guys are subscribing to. That's, that's, the, that's the underlying, he's, oh, I'm just a sign that it's just a Skinnerd fan. Yeah, I Don't just want to wear this. And, he's just, and, and LL Cool J is kind of sanctioning that attitude, which is, hey, if, I, if you don't like the thing on my head, then fine, but shut up and I won't talk about the thing that you're wearing that is a <laughs> symbol of, again, an attempt to keep millions of Americans in chains and... 
I, no, I, I like I, this I, stuff I, isn't. This is I don't. I, this is one of those issues, and it comes up all the time now. In a variety of ways, especially like right now, especially it comes up, I think, with like the same sex marriage and a lot of, you know, LGBT stuff where people who are conservative seem to feel like they should be able to say whatever they want and then not have to have anybody be offended by it. Like like what they really are nostalgic for is that is the good old days when they could talk about the queers and nobody would even second guess them on it. Like that's what they, that's what they're nostalgic for is this sort of ability to just sort of like just rule a whole class of people like uh, you know off out, outside the the bounds of, of humanity as they conceive it and then not have to pay any kind of kind of price for it in terms of, of umbrage incurred by other people. Yes, but see in another song Brad Paisley brings that up. Oh, does he? In which he talks about the fact that you have to empathize, you have to know what it feels like to be a minority, and here's how he does that. Oh no. I know what it's like to be the only one like me. To take a good hard oh, no. look around and be in the minority. Oh, that's, that was a lyric. And what, what was what, what? What is his minority status derived from? I think he's he's actually not. A... No, because I think he. You know, because he's a star. I mean, I think he might be in New York City wearing a white cowboy hat and cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> or he's huh. somewhere where you know. I listen. I mm. don't know. Huh. Sad. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting approach to minority status, I guess. Yeah, you know, but whatever. Maybe he actually didn't really like Leonard Skinner at some point in his childhood, and he knows what it's like to walk to that Lonesome Valley. Who knows? Anyway, Henry has suggested that if Pittsburgh doesn't have a motto, we could make it Pittsburgh, the biggest ashtray in the world. Yeah. Close. It's not bad, considering Tupelo already has, we don't shoot elephants here, so <laughs> you got to do something. Oh, so, hey, i got to show you. Um, <laughs> we don't shoot elephants, but check this out. Uh-oh. I'm in my backyard yesterday, enjoying the sun, <laughs> and I heard quacks. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they weren't overhead, like right. flying. Right. And I thought, ducks? As I, anyone would in this circumstance, I think. Well, yeah, but ducks, water, right? Yeah, right. Have yeah. you seen ducks in your front yard? No, not at no. all. So no, so I thought, where the hell would these ducks be coming from? I followed the noise, led me to the fence... Got up, high up, and looked into my neighbor's yard. And there? Swimming in there, in this water that they had standing there. It was a pair, a male and and a a female. female. And I got a figure that they were flying. You know, who knows where their home is to them, right? They were going home. Hmm. They're flying, and they were ready for a little rest and maybe a snack. And they actually saw what was... These people have a, a lap pool, and and it's not open, right? But there's a tarp on yeah, it, sure. and there's and water yeah, and sure. leaves, and it's most uninviting looking. Unless you're a duck. Unless you're a duck. And <laughs> I got to tell you, there's so much wildlife right in the city. Oh, it's so true. In fact, I'll, can I wrap this up with it with a story that brings good newspaper leads and wildlife and and, and shooting together? and shooting animals all together in one story? Do it. This comes to me courtesy of Lauren Daly, who used to work at the Indiana Gazette, a paper in Indiana, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> one of her erstwhile colleagues had to write a story about somebody who was in the parking lot at Walmart and shot a deer there, yes. and his lead was, Walmart is a place where you can save a dollar or waste a buck. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, pretty good. Representing out there in Indiana. I gotta tell you, I t- I'm speechless. <laughs> Save a dollar or waste, waste a, a buck. buck. <laughs> yeah, I can't. There's nothing left to say. Thank you as usual, Mr. Always Connor. good to be here. And uh, thank you. And tomorrow, I guess Mr. Sokolowski joins us. Toodaloo. Uh...
Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.